Hello and welcome to Street View. In this video I'm going to be taking a couple of images and exploring how they can be given the analogue look as though they were taken using film stock to help give a more cinematic feel to them. I'm going to be manipulating the images in Dehancer Photo, which is a film emulation plugin available for Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One and Affinity Photo on both the Apple and Windows platforms. Let's take a look. <laughs> I'm going to be working with Capture One today and I'll be accessing the Dehancer plugin from within it. In order to open your files in Dehancer, the host software, such as Capture One in this case, has to convert the file to a 16-bit sRGB TIFF file. You cannot open a RAW file directly into Dehancer. So let's take a look at our first image. The image you see here from an OR file, a .orf file, has been given some minor adjustments in order to prepare it for Dehancer. It's been straightened, the white balance has been adjusted and slight colour cast removed and also some contrast has been reduced. I think the flatter the images are when you take them into Dehancer the better. I've found that if the image is too contrasty, when you apply the film profiles they can start to look a little dull or muddy. So make sure you've made these adjustments before going into the plugin. So let's open up the image in Dehancer by going to Image, Edit With and Dehancer Plugin. Here we're presented with an info box where we can see that a 16-bit uncompressed TIFF file will be created. So we're happy with that, so we're going to go ahead and click on Edit Variants. And it takes a few seconds to process the file. And this now takes us to the Dehancer interface itself. We'll take a quick look at the layout and see what's on offer. On the left hand side of the screen are the film profiles and on the right hand side are the settings and effects where you can make any adjustments to the basic film profile settings. And on the top here as well as the profiles we have the presets where you can create your own preset based on any adjustments you've made to a profile during your edit of the image and then save that preset so you can use it on another image. And then this cogwheel is where you can download additional profiles as and when they become available online. There are 63 profiles available at the time of me making this video. Here we have undo and redo buttons and also a reset button over here to take you back to where you started so you can begin all over again if you don't like what you've done. And over here we have the preview button so you can compare the current adjustments to the original. OK, with that done, let's begin by adding a profile. It's worth pointing out that you don't have to apply one of the profiles and you can go straight into editing the image by using the controls here on the right. So if you're after a particular effect like grain or halation perhaps, you can just apply those directly to the image. But we're going to start off by looking at the profiles and by selecting colour positive from the list which are colour transparency or slide film emulations. Let's go ahead and select Kodak Ektachrome E100, which is a fine grain film with good saturation, which is what I'm looking for here with this image. I want to enrich it with deeper colours and make it more vibrant. And here we can see the initial effect of applying the Ektachrome 100 profile. So let's take a look at source. Here the temperature compensation slider allows you to warm or cool the image based on the initial profile effect. You can also add a tint to it as well. You can also use the defringe option if you didn't deal with any chromatic aberration when you were preparing the image prior to bringing it into Dehancer. Underneath that we have the film compression options where we're able to change the level of brightness in the image, the tonal range and also the colour density. I like these options. They are quite subtle adjustments, but they can have an impact on the detail in the image and the overall look. Using the controls under expand, you can change the black point and push it into the negative and more towards the mid-tones. And with the white point, you can brighten it up a little. And while making any of these adjustments, you can toggle the preview on and off to see the overall effect you are getting. If you're using a negative film emulation profile, the print settings will give you a simulation of what the negative would look like if it was printed onto photographic paper. The settings give you a bit more control over exposure, 
contrast, density and saturation. Print also emulates what a motion film would look like when a print is made onto another film stock from the negative it was shot with. This area represents the colour head of the darkroom enlarger and this emulates the way you can change the colour or tint of the light by adding certain colours and here we have sliders for yellow, blue, magenta green and cyan red. We also have sliders for shadows, midtones and highlights enabling us to make further adjustments in these areas. Underneath that there is the preserve exposure setting that allows us to keep the brightness in the image and won't affect the exposure level at all. Moving on to film grain, this is an effect which is special to a plug-in like Dehancer. Most image editing software doesn't come with a film grain tool and although you could simulate the effect it wouldn't be as easy as what we can do here in Dehancer. If we enlarge the image here so we can see how clear the image is at present and then when we turn on film grain we can see how the texture of the image immediately changes. Now what I like about the options we have is the amount of control there is over all aspects of the image. We can control not only the size and the amount of the grain but also how it affects the shadows, midtones and the highlights. So if you wanted less grain in the highlights, for example, we could do that independently of how it is affecting the mids or shadows. Also, the colour slider allows you to control the actual amount of colour you are getting in the grain, as colour film has colour grain, it's not monochromatic. Moving on to halation, this is where the light spreads beyond its proper boundaries to form a sort of fog at the edges of the brighter parts of the image. Now this is most noticeable with neon lights at night but you can see the effect in daylight images where there is a lot of contrast as in our image here. I actually quite like it and it does help to give a sort of cinematic glow in the sunlit areas. Bloom is a similar effect to halation but it has more of a feathering effect from within the light area itself and tends to give it more volume while also softening it. It almost adds a sort of mist to it and creates some nice atmospherics. OK, I'm going to make a few changes to the image in order to finish it off. Under film compression I'm going to increase the tonal range a little, take it up to around about here, and I'm also going to increase the colour density to a similar amount. Under expand I'm going to slightly increase the black point to create a little more contrast and adjust the white point to add some extra brightness. I think the image is now looking much better and has a more of a cinematic and film-like quality to it. I like the way the colour contrast has been improved and there is much richer density to it as well. Let's bring in another image and have a look at the black and white profiles this time. We'll go to the film profiles and we can see that there are eight at the time of making this video. I like that there is Ilford HP5 Plus 400, Ilford XP2 Super 400 and it's also nice to see Kodak Plus X Pan 125. For this image we're going to use Ilford XP2. Here's a quick comparison with the original. Now we're going to use film compression and I'm going to increase the impact to 100 to gain the full effect. I'm going to reduce the white point down to 50 and we're starting to see some richer blacks and I'm going to boost the tonal range and we can see how much more detail we're now getting, for example with the brickwork. Moving down to expand, I'll move the black point up to give more contrast and boost the highlights too. Now onto film grain, we'll move into a magnified view so we can see the results more easily. I'll turn it on and we can see the immediate difference but I'm going to use only a subtle amount by reducing it in the highlights and the amount too. If we do a comparison with the before we can see that it gives us just a little more textural interest. And then finally I'm going to turn on bloom because it gives the image just a little bit of a glow and amplifies the light very slightly which I really like. I think I'm happy with that. 
let's take a look at the original image and the final Dehance look. I hope what I've shown you here will be of some help in trying to get that cinematic look to your pictures. And if you're looking for the film look in particular, then I think Dehancer works pretty well. As someone who grew up using film, I've retained a liking for it and still shoot with it from time to time. So it's nice to be able to use something that emulates the film look quite closely with digital images. Thanks very much for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you next time. To see more of my work, visit my website at www.rupertvandervelde.co.uk and check out my book, Fine Art Street Photography, available at Amazon.